Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss a very important topic about uh, vitamin B12. We know there are um, water soluble and fat soluble vitamins. Vitamin B group belongs to water soluble. Uh, even though there are 12 in number, uh, some of them have been recognized and as non-vitamins and taken off. Uh, this is the complete list of the available 8 B vitamins, of which today's topic will be vitamin B12. Chemical name is cobalamin. So, commonly presented as cyanocobalamin in supplements, but uh, uh, presently we do get hydroxycobalamin and methylcobalamin as well available for prescription. The available vitamins, so cobalamin, vitamin B12 needs an important uh, transition metal called cobalt. And uh, they have a, a corin nucleus with the cobalt atom in the center. And attached to this is one of the side chains and depending upon the side chains it gets the name hydroxycobalamin, cyanocobalamin uh, which are available in nature whereas once they enter our system our own cellular metabolism converts them into either adenosylcobalamin or methylcobalamin. And they occur in various isoforms called vitamins. As I said uh, the bacterial production uh, results in hydroxycobalamin and charcoal contamination gives rise to cyanocobalamin which are naturally occurring and the other two forms are made by the human cellular metabolism. It is a very complex cofactor, uh, at least the 30 steps are involved in making vitamin B12. So, no animal or plant is equipped to synthesize vitamin B12 in nature. They can be produced only by bacteria and the RKA. So, all the rest of the living things need to acquire B12 from the original producers namely bacteria and the RKA. If you look at this uh, periodic table, you will note that uh, the transition metals, the cations, you know, the uh, covalent, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, you know, and copper, zinc, they have come to play very important roles in sustaining several vital functions uh, in the form of cofactors and enzymes. Amazingly, these metals and rest of the elements of the periodic table are made by fusion process in the extreme high temperatures of exploding stars called supernova and they are scattered in the galaxy. And uh, for example, in Earth, there is only limited amount of available heavy metals, transition metals, including gold. And uh, in the life tree, it is amazing how uh, these metals which are made in the star are used in uh, synthesis of cofactors to start with by the very basic bacteria and then uh, uh, advanced uh, living beings like plants. They use magnesium in chlorophyll, we use iron in hemoglobin and the copper is used in many cytochromes and uh, uh, today's uh, hero cobalamin is used in uh, synthesis of vitamin B12. So, it is it's very um, amazing and humbling to think how the life machinery has evolved using the uh, elements made in the exploding stars and then we come to use them and uh, make a biological living existence on the planet earth. So, to understand B12, we need to look at uh, two contrasting characters. So, one it come from the nature extrinsic which is B12, we saw is very unique, special, made from the stardust, cobalt, uh, incorporating corin ring with a side chain namely the cobalamin. And to make it useful to us, to make it available to the uh, correct place, we produce an intrinsic factor. So, uh, that is available in our human body, we make it and this is to come from the outside nature. So, you can boldly say that uh, cobalamin is uh, nature's most beautiful cofactor. Look at this um, electron microscope picture. So, it is really pink to red and a real beauty to look at. So, I call it a red rose and it makes a very um, epic journey from its origin in the stardust incorporated by the bacteria and RKA into uh, cobalamin and how it reaches us and then uh, makes it to the destiny. So, the co-players of uh, this uh, uh, elaborate drama are haptocorins, 
intrinsic factor, transcobalamin and uh, the enzymes which use um, vitamin B12 as a dependent cofactor. So the first step in journey is it should be available in the diet we consume. As you see, it is available only in animal uh, stuff. There is no source of B12 in the uh, plants. So in fact, uh, the fruit eating uh, bat which is a vegetarian suffers from B12 deficiency. So if you are a vegetarian, you are destined to become B12 deficient. The animal products derive their source from uh, bacteria they consume. You can imagine fish consuming so much of uh, bacteria and archaea and also some of the animals can synthesize in the bacteria within the, uh, the human bag. They synthesize B12, absorb it and then uh, digest the rest of it. The rest of us need to get from supplements either from the diet or uh, from the supplements. You can see some foodstuffs like liver and clams have uh, high levels of uh, B12 in their um, nature. So you need to take B12 in the diet or a supplement and then we need to make a haptocorin which is a, a small player. It is a glycoprotein secreted by the salivary glands as well as the parietal cells of the stomach. It has a very non-specific nature and function. What it does is, when the food reaches the stomach, the acid and pepsin digest and release the cobalamin from the food. So it is a chemical digestion and the release. That is the step 3. Step 1 is uh, available in the diet. Step 2 is a uh, presence of haptocorin. Third is a release of cobalamin from the diet. And we need to bind the release to cobalamin to the haptocorin. So haptocorin and cobalamin is a transient uh, duo couple and they survive the acidic environment as a unit and then pass on through the pylorus into the duodenum.